Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Things That We Learned After Manchester City's very satisfying and comprehensive 3 0 victory away at Craven Cottage and Scott Parker's Fulham. It was lovely, lovely stuff. After an interesting first half as well, there's plenty to talk about, so I picked out five things that I personally took from that game. Before I do that though, I want to say thank you as ever to One Football. Look at it, just look at it alongside me. It's beautiful. It's like you guys, it's wonderful. Go and download One Football right now in the link in the description below so you get all the gossip all the news all the analysis all the things that you can need to know about Manchester City Football Club and the wider world of football in general and the best thing about it it costs absolutely nothing it's free over 10 million people have already downloaded it for a reason because it's absolutely awesome and as I said it helps support my channel so if you want all the Manchester City information and to be ahead of the news when the transfers start to come in in a few months time download one football right now in the link in the description below because it's absolutely absolutely awesome and it helps support my channel do it right now right now when you downloaded it let me know in the comments and also want to say thank you as well uh, to every single one who's recently for all the support on the channel if you are new to it make sure to hit that subscribe button so we get those numbers up and up and up and up it'd be good to see give the video a like while you're at it as well let's dive into the first thing that we learned um and i've, I've just titled it quite simply Pep got a pep. Pep Guardiola's got a Pep Guardiola every now and then. Um, and what I'm referring to here, of course, is Manchester City's... Uh innovative take on 3-4-3 yesterday. It was a relatively standard 3-4-3, if we're being honest. Or maybe it was a 3-5-2, but to me, it looked like a 3-4-3. But we saw uh, a Pep Classic, basically. Him changing the tactics up. Him changing something new uh, days before a big Champions League game. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not the sign of a, an overt change. But I think Guardiola was trying something new just to keep things fresh. Um, and also just to keep everyone happy in his squad. I'm going to get onto that later on. But basically, you can't really... Um, new to the instincts of Pep Guardiola and I don't think we really should tr uh, try and do that because obviously he wanted to try something new and he got it right he will feel justified and that's ultimately the only thing that matters if a manager like Guardiola tries something new and, and it works in the end then it was justified. It really is quite as simple as that, unfortunately, for people who don't want to see it again. He will feel relatively justified. I don't think we'll try it very often, by the way, but I do think it was an um, experiment definitely worth trying. And it was nice to see Mendy as well get a game, even though he's obviously maybe not the answer. There could be a late resurgence. We've seen stranger things in Manchester City, but it was still nice to see him. And I actually thought he was okay, and I thought Cancelo showed he can play that traditional wing-back role very well as well. And I think um, the defence... After initial slightly shaky period, I think the defence were pretty on top of things. He's been dying to play that free at the back. You can just tell he's wanted to play Laporte, Stones and Diaz together for ages. And he used this yesterday as a chance to try something new. And that's how you do it, Pep, by the way. If you're going to try a new tactic, please don't drop it in a big game. Drop it in a game like this when there is a cushion where the consequences of losing aren't catastrophic. That's how we should do it. So maybe, actually, this is Pep gone to Pep, but also Pep learning something new at the same time. The second thing I took from this game was laughing Jesus. Jesus, um, he was good. Jesus was good yesterday. He was really good. Now, I've always defended Jesus as a footballer. I mean, anyone who doesn't see that he's a good footballer simply isn't really paying attention to football. He's, he's clearly a fantastic footballer. There are some fair question marks about his suitability to lead the line and be the main goal-scoring uh, striker to, you know, to shoulder that burden that comes with being a striker at a world-class team like Manchester City. But I think it's obvious that he's a very, very good footballer. And yes, Yesterday, Jesus was arguably our best player. He was absolutely fantastic in a slightly deeper, more involved role. Um, the amount of times he got the ball, uh, roughly around the halfway line, in a traditional kind of left-winger role, but span and drove it towards the defence. And his link-up play was absolutely excellent. Well, it was just lovely to see. And you can't deny his work rate. You can't deny his technical ability as well. We can question his finishing if you want to, though his goal was brilliant, by the way. That's the confidence I want to see, Jesus. That level of confidence. Believe in yourself, because when you're that good... Well, well, you see where those early R9 comparisons come from when you watch a comp of his performance yesterday. I'm not saying he's that level, he never will be probably. But what I'm saying is that left wing Jesus um, is a real option. It's a real option. Obviously, that causes issues with tension in the squad with Sterling and Foden. I don't really know the solution to that. I'm not going to pretend to. Good luck, Mr. Guardiola. But we can't discount him as a player. If Aguero does move on, and I'll get on to him in a minute, if he does move on in the summer... Um, 
We need Jesus there because even though he may not be the ideal first two, uh, first choice striker, he's definitely one you want as a backup and definitely one you want in the squad because he can do so many roles. He works so hard and he's such an intelligent footballer and only pretty young still. Thirdly, Con Alive, which is a pun based on a popular saying, Man Alive. Uh, you, you probably don't know that, especially if you're not um, from the UK. Anyway, Con's Alive. He scored yesterday. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. It was just a penalty. But either way, it was everything I've wanted to see for ages um, and it was lovely to see Kun back on the pitch yesterday being involved scoring a goal and showing that he's very much uh, around to potentially be useful now I'm not really particularly saying he was fantastic yesterday or anything like that but I guess the point really is that he played a game he played an awful lot of minutes um, he was involved and he's shown that he can genuinely be useful uh, towards the business end of the season I even loved Guardiola as well talking about his relationship with Sergio after all these people saying oh maybe Pep's mistreating him maybe Pep Pep hates Guardiola. I said this to someone on Twitter recently. Occam's Razor. Now, Google Occam's Razor. I love a, a simple moral principle in life. And Occam's Razor basically states um, the idea that has the fewest number of assumptions is usually the correct one. Basically, if you have to keep making up uh, things that seem unrealistic for something to be true, it probably isn't true. And basically, once again, the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. So when it was, everyone was going, oh, Pep obviously just hates Aguero uh, uh, and all this kind of stuff. Actually, maybe the simplest explanation, which was he's not been fit recently and potentially we just like the false nine thing in a more fluid system, were the obvious ones. Maybe it was just obviously that. And it so clearly is, especially when you see Guardiola's comments to yesterday. He said, Sergio is maybe the legend. Sometimes when I review the goal that won the Premier League for Mancini, it is something special. He is a lovely person and what he has done. And we are going to decide the best for both sides. For Sergio, it's important to score. A long time injured, a tough game with tough opponents. Of course, he is still in the process but of getting his fitness, I presume he means. But it was a good, a good, um, but it was good to finish 90 minutes in good rhythm and to score a goal for all strikers is important. So that puts to bed any idea of a rift there. And even Sergio apparently played down rumors linking to Barcelona. He says, stop, I'm a Man City player, which I love to see as well. Now, obviously, we might not see a long-term future here for Aguero. But the point is I'm making, it's nice to see that there was never a big issue. It was just purely down to tactics and fitness and all that kind of stuff, which can be frustrating for Aguero. But I'm sorry, Pep's earned the right to make difficult choices. Either way, Kun's alive. He's back and he scored and he felt lovely. Four point I wanted to make was kind of slightly touched on the Pep going to be Pep point from earlier, but that yesterday was a squad flex. It really was, wasn't it? That was a massive flex from Guardiola about the depth of our squad. We didn't really learn it, but we do. We have learned that Guardiola is willing to be uh, experimental with his squad at this time of the season if it means resting certain players. No Sterling yesterday. Now, I've seen some rumours go around on social media about a fallout. Either way, I'm not concerned. Even if there is a fallout, I'm not saying it happened. It probably hasn't happened. Even if there is one, it's probably Chinese whispers to escalate it to another level. But either way, even if someone has fallen out and Sterling's left out for that reason, these things are over very quickly. It'd be a bruised ego thing and nothing else. You've got to bear in mind that players and all this kind of stuff fall out all the time behind closed doors. It happens all the time, but it usually never leaves the dressing room uh, because it's uh, testosterone fueled winners. They will fall out all the time. Look at uh, De Bruyne with the let me speak stuff and all that kind of thing. It happens all the time. I don't think it's happened, by the way, but if it has, it isn't a big deal. Either way, the squad flex yesterday from Guardiola was impressive. I love the fact that he brought Ferran Torres, Mendy and Jay, uh, Aguero in. I love it. Even though it was obviously not the most informed side that we picked, I love that he, he showed these players that they can be involved and I love that he gave them game time and I love that he felt confident to do that and still win. Because that shows just how confident we are currently with this squad that we've got. And it was a flex. And it was saying to the rest of the Premier League that we mean business. And this squad depth is very real. And we can rotate. And we can change the tactics. And we can bring players out from the cold. Like Mendy who's barely played any football. And we still will win a game. And that is impressive. And that should uh, put fear amongst some of our opponents if it hasn't already. Uh, finally, and one player I kind of wanted to talk about uh, was Ferran Torres. Because uh, a lot of people were giving him criticism yesterday. Not everyone, admittedly. But people. People were saying he's maybe not that good. Because I think it's a little bit naive and a little bit short-sighted. Basically, I want to um, plea for Ferran Torres' patience because the kid needs time. And he is a kid. I know to some of you guys, he won't be a kid because some of you will be younger than Ferran Torres. But to someone slightly older for me, look down. I was a kid at 20. I was a young lad and I didn't have um, experience in life or anything. I was just a young lad. And to me, Ferran Torres is a young lad trying to make his way in a new country in a very horrible time. And the reason I'm stressing this once again, and if you watch these videos, 
videos. You know I've said things like this many times, but I'm going to stress it again because it doesn't. It is worth repeating because these kind of things do affect people. Now, Ferran Torres joined uh, Manchester City during the midst of a global pandemic when the world was turned upside down. A genuinely horrible time where travel bans and all that kind of stuff were put in place and he joined uh, without a chance to meet the fans. He hasn't met Manchester City fans yet. He's paid, played behind closed doors. He hasn't really had a chance to live a life in Manchester because I've been crushingly bored and some people maybe watching these videos from overseas won't quite appreciate how locked down we are in the UK. Shops are shut. You know, other than like basic grocery shops and basic live shops, everything is shut. Cinemas are shut. Bowling's shut. Uh, bars are shut. Clubs are shut. Restaurants are shut. Everything is shut. Everything that basically the kind of stuff that you would do to wind down, it's all shut. Everything is shut, basically. So what I'm saying is he's, had a, he's moved to a new city, a miserable, rainy city for what it's worth, and he's been locked behind closed doors with nothing to do, probably crushingly bored, and then also got COVID, lost a little bit of weight, and he's been in and out the team. The point I'm making, it's hard to be perfect. Give him time to adapt. Give him time to adapt to Manchester. Give him time to adapt to this side and its people, and give him time to adapt how we play. Um, he's only young. He's clearly very talented, and even though he wasn't perfect yesterday, he still did win a penalty, and he was much better in the second half than the first first but he does need time and we're so quick to write our players sometimes and Ferran Torres does deserve our patience because he's a very talented footballer that hasn't found his role yet in this Manchester City side but we forget just how good he was in the early Champions League group stages where he was scoring goals for us as a striker he's a very good footballer with lots of natural talent he just needs to find his role at Manchester City but that will come with time a little bit of patience we've learned many lessons about previous transfers along those lines guys that brings me to the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching this. Big love to every single one of you. And thank you to my Patreon producer, Ahmed Al Ali, an absolute legend. Patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to help support the channel a tiny bit more. And of course, if you don't, don't worry about it. I appreciate not everyone can chip in that way. Just make sure to like these videos and subscribe and comment and all the usual stuff. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of today's subjects and what you personally learned from the game. Go watch my match reaction from last night and I'll see you tomorrow.